Fabricio, Fabricio Dominguez. How are you doing? Present. 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 I'm doing good, man. A pleasure. Honored to be here on Honor. Conversations with Charles. The talks, the talks. Yeah, no. Um, How like are I you told doing? You, I'm good. But like you, I'm a bit tired, though. That's actually a true fact because it is the first time I'm doing this at night. So and I usually go to bed early. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is conversations with Charles night sessions. Yeah. So this might go a completely different way. This might not be the huge, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> in any case, so what would be interesting as well for myself, as for anyone who might be listening, um, tell us a little bit, or tell me a little bit about yourself, almost like if we're speed dating. What would be some keys? Okay, so my elevator pitch, as they say. Oh, if you got that, awesome. So yeah, my name is, yeah, yeah, for sure. My name is Fabricio Dominguez. I am 26 years old, born and raised in the beautiful island of the Dominican Republic. Um, I studied international business and finance and have a master's on business administration uh, focused on tourism industry because that is the industry I've worked for pre-pandemic for almost all my life. I moved around quite a bit. I The first time I moved out of my house was in 2016 for my senior year of college, which I went to Miami. Great city, best first first best year of my life where I graduated from FIU, as I mentioned before, in, in business. Um, it was quite hard coming back after that, after a year in Miami with 21 years old. And when I came back is where I, when I moved to Sosua, because I came back to Santo Domingo, which is the capital of the DR, for those of you who don't know. And I felt like super out of place. I was, can't say depressed, but I was sad. And then I got offered. So yeah, as you know, my family is involved in the tourism industry here in the Dominican Republic. Yeah. And I used to work for the corporate offices while I was studying in Santo Domingo before moving to Miami and of a Dominican hotel chain. And when I came back from graduating, like, okay, what do we do now? I have a diploma, but that's it. Um, I got offered a training in one of the hotels in Sosua in the North Coast. And I'm like, why the hell not? Let's do it. So it was supposed to be two months in Sosua working as guest service in this 600 room all-inclusive hotel with guests and tourists from all over the world. And as you know, guests, tourists especially can be insane when they're on vacation in uh -huh. the Caribbean. So I spent a year and two months living in Sosua, uh, learning my Sankey roots, my Sankey Panky roots. <laughs> And after that, after the year and two months, <laughs> I got dragged back down to the capital, back to Santo Domingo by my superiors. They were like, okay, you learned enough already and you're having a bit too much fun, come back. And spent here about seven months before I moved to Europe to pursue my master's, to keep studying. At first I spent two months in Berlin Boys okay. had a very good Deutsch gelernt. Being in the business, I well, I started in Sosua, learning German, then spent two months in an intensive course, polishing it, which was a lot of fun. Berlin, Berlin, and after that, I moved to Madrid to pursue my masters for about ten months. So it was like a year total in Europe. Came back exactly a year ago. And then exactly January a year ago today, 2020. No, 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 no. exactly uh, a year ago, about two months ago. Uh, I remember it was September the 2nd, September the 2nd. So like a month and a half ago, more or less. That part of the 
good life ended and when i came back i thought like damn okay so what now is it like really time to settle down in the dr like am i gonna start building my future am i that adult now and i was sort of right but not in the dr i got offered a job to in hotel in another hotel chain in mexico in playa del carmen which i moved to in january super excited by myself i'd never been to mexico before didn't know anyone there boom get there at first it wasn't what i expected i was a bit out of my comfort zone which is good but I what, what that was what did you expect out of that comfort zone out of the box makes you um okay so it started with like the living situation let's say i went back to feeling as if i was living like in a dorm because like all the uh employees of the hotel they stay at this poblado which was they called and when i was working in hotels here i was a bit of hmm, how do i say it like get certain luxuries employee life as it is exactly exactly i had my perks yeah. but this time i was like nobody's son i was just fabricio a new guy here coming from the dr cool and it was an area that it was guest service as well as well so i'm a, i consider myself a bit of a people's person not a bit a lot of a people's person i handle myself pretty well around <laughs> around people so mexico came started making friends like in my job at, at first like the first couple of weeks were tough because since i was by myself i didn't have like any friends or anything yeah. but then i started getting along with people I think that like vibes attract like if you're moving to a new every time i've moved to a new country that you like go out there like okay i need to make friends some way or another you get like people that with at least similar not the same but similar ideology similar way of thinking or looking at life like you attract those people so there i started making those type of friends started going out getting more comfortable and then COVID-19 strikes and I am stuck in Mexico with no job because the hotel's closed, no way to come back to my country because we closed borders like the day the, the hotel's closed. And I don't know, you can call it a blessing, you can call it luck, I don't know, a mix of everything. I got this friend of an aunt that lived in Mexico with her husband they're both Dominicans they welcomed me into their home <laughs> their beach home like right by the beach um i they we'd met when i was like a baby i never met them before and neither you know you know how dominicans are always like oh fulana vive allá let them know you're there and stuff and yeah see what up boom okay so long story short i stayed in their mexican beach house for two months before I could get smuggled back in the country. Not really smuggled, but sort of. And it was like season one of the pandemic. Yeah, nobody knew what the fuck was, what was going on. When was this going to end? Is it going to end? It was crazy. It was crazy. But at least I was on the beach every day. Started working out. Were you by yourself or you're with the family? Ukulele. That's another... Uh, uh, no, I lived with this family. I was like ah, the okay. adopted child of this family. It was mom, dad, and their daughter. Yeah, so I had like a, it was, nah, I was the adopted child. They, it was fun. It was fun. Me and the, the uncle, we bonded a lot. Uh, me and the aunt as well. Me and the, let's say, little sister. It was great. It was great. I was the luckiest guy. Like it was the per best scenar scenario possible to, the best possible scenario to like, receive this pandemic we're still living in and then so yeah i came back in june um my mom started a restaurant business two years ago uh it's a coffee shop here called for like cafe i guess we'll be talking about that as well and sure. now i realized okay so this is what we have this is what we do we at first uh mid-summer we didn't know if we we're going to be able to like stay open because there was um quarantine and toca de queda here it was at 7 p.m i think at first so like businesses we couldn't open restaurants couldn't receive people to sit down and then i'm like okay so this is the family business now the hotels they're all closed um i gotta be productive some way 
my mom needs my help. And now, what, like, it's been five months, four months. Yeah. We're doing super good. This is my full-time job for now. I, I'm happy. I see myself doing this for a while to come. And here we are. Here we are now. Almost <laughs> December, which is insane. It's been a crazy year for all of us. So that was the elevator. Pitch. That was too long for an elevator pitch. Yeah, that's. I was like, man, this this is a tall yeah. ass building. This is the highest <laughs> <laughs> fucking elevator had a problem. <laughs> for sure. Power went out at one point. We went down, came. We went up, came back down. Yeah. Went up. Yeah. Let's talk. That's so as well. for a lot but of yeah, people, it's a lot to talk about. Like for, I took down some notes of what you what you sort of said, um, because you said a lot. So taking a couple steps back, you mentioned uh, 2016 is when you first moved out, lived in Miami, and you said it was the first best year of your life. What does that mean? Totally. Like, you don't have to go into detail, but what does that sort what of mean in the gist mean? of it? So I say that to not only that, but like an overview. So I consider that the last four years starting in 2016 they all have been the best years of my life because yeah. they've all been so different i've been in so many different places met so many cool people so many people that have one way or another impacted my life in a positive way and it started in 2016 and i could have at 2016 you, you could you if you were to ask me I'd be like, this is going to be the best year of my life. But then came 2017, and I would would have said the same, 2018, 2019. Uh, 2020, uh, maybe not the best, but it's, it's, has, it's been exciting. It's, it's had its perks. Well. So, yeah, that's why I consider that 2016. Not that the years before, not that, yeah, for sure. But not that the years before, years before were not good. They just weren't. Best year of my no, that's what it career. sounded like. That's why when you said best year of your life, I was like, what happened? Were you like in a prison for everything up to that point and then you got out? Like, no, you had yeah, out no, of jail no, free no. card and stuff. Yeah. No, I actually, my childhood was like, I can't complain at all about my childhood, my high school education. And then the first three years of college, which I did here in New York, they were okay like uh, you start you know you're 18 19 20 you get more freedom to do a lot of stuff you start earning your money it was good but i don't know i'm not a fan of santo domingo very much try to get out as much as possible so that's why i say that when i first left yeah that's when i started really living um you did your because you you grew up in Santo Domingo and you did university in Santo Domingo did university just feel like a little bit of like a high school with a little bit more freedom sort of thing or what was that uh, like because it's not like university in this lot, country a lot like high school yeah because university in this country is not like there's door rooms and is there even a dorm for like Unibe, for example or is it like you have to find an apartment in the city not i mean no 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 not at all like if you come to study Unibe from uh, outside of the city or from another country i mean you have to arrange your housing by yourself i don't think Unibe. maybe they have like contacts for to rent places yeah, and yeah, I, sure. know, I know that around the university there are like student housing but nothing to do with the university so i say that the first three years of college were a lot like high school even more because i study with a group of like 10 best friends well not 10 but like let's say five or seven of my best friends from high school like we still took all the classes together of course we sat next to each other we did the same <laughs> fooling around we used to do in high school which i know you yeah you are aware of all the craziness that happens in dominican high schools yeah, so yeah, yeah it was yeah. a lot uh, like high school but with more freedom more you had your own car <laughs> you could spend your money you would tell your, your mom would still be like oh don't come home back late and you just come home late it was good it was good like it was a good entry to the young adult world but i yeah. feel that for example my friends from high school that left to the u.s for college right away it's such a different upbringing than just like staying here 
after after different in a good way different in a bad way or just different different how do you see that mm, i'd say more good than in a bad way because as what 2016 was for me when i first left that was 2012 for them like gotcha. but i do have to say living in santo domingo being raised here you are you're a prince man i mean in your house you don't you don't cook you don't have to clean you don't have i don't cook i don't clean <laughs> you know like people do a bunch of yeah. stuff for you but that's one of the things i like the most about leaving leaving like having to do things for myself becoming becoming independent so then when you went to miami how was like how was that in a way did that because miami is a crazy place you know people also see it only in the movies or they hear about it but living in it it's actually like what it what they say it's a place that's always going on it's always on fire there's always something happening and all the vices that's why it's miami vice right all the vices from not only drugs and alcohol but even to vices of being a human of lying cheating stealing being a straight savage is not uncommon there this you is like uh this all is all that in miami every day area not at all, not at all. so how like what did you, because I don't think you got lost in any of those vices per se, but how was it being around that at all times? Like anytime you went out, anytime you walked in the streets, the savagery, how is it to live in the jungle? Because Santo Domingo is a concrete that was, jungle. I would say that was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But Miami, how how is that? How do you, how do you see that? Did that that played a, an interesting role in your life? I'm guessing in your development. I'd say that Miami made me like work on my self control even more than what I had to work for college. Because Miami, it's so easy to get lost in Miami, and so many people get lost in like this to the point of no return. But I, as I say, a lot of self, self control. I, at least I lived, which was like, I know a technique on purpose by my father. He made me move close to the university. So I had less excuse, let's say, to not go to class. I mean, like if I had classes in the afternoon, which most of my classes were, I'm like, okay, I don't, it's not that I have to take the, the highway or anything to get to college. I, I could go walking. Yeah. But for example, I had friends that lived farther away, let's say like in Brickell downtown where all the clubs were. And it's not that they did bad in college or they got lost or anything, but I know that knowing the type of person that I am, it would have been so much harder for me to graduate maybe, or just like keep a straight professional path. But I think that even more since we are, as I said before, like the group of best friends from high school, we we couldn't maintain each other on, on on the right path and if we saw one of us like mm, tumbling a bit it would have been like hey get back on track this we're here and more than like we were there and it was okay this might be hopefully it's more than one year but you we only have one year for sure so make the most out of it and like in fact I had a girlfriend at the time that she lived in Santo Domingo. I lived in my, I moved to Miami. And it came to a point that I thought to myself like, okay, I'm happy. I'm having fun. I'm in Miami, but I'm not having the most fun I can. Yeah, so, yeah sure, sure, sure. You got it. That didn't work. And then I had to squeeze in like the last six, seven months. And I'm like, I don't regret anything on the contrary, but it was good. To, like it even helped me keep the balance between the professional academic life. And then of course the parties, the, I, I joined a frat. It was good. It was good. It was well balanced after that. So, so, uh, oof, it got, so, so uh, was also, 
hardcore. But that Miami, for that year I was there, it was the perfect city for me to be 21, 22 years old. And like, for example, now, I don't know if I'd go back to live in Miami. And I, every time I go back to visit, I love it on Miami always. But I don't know. I think the stage that I lived there was the perfect stage to live there. At. And then the stage I was in Madrid, well, it was perfect for, for Madrid. But I wouldn't like go back now, for example, to Miami. It's too much, too much. Would you go back to Berlin, Madrid, or Mexico? Oh, well, to visit, I go every year to all of them but to live yeah. i think i'd prefer europe though somewhere in europe but yeah i don't know if i'd be able to live in miami again live live <laughs> you wouldn't be able to live at live is that what you're saying they got some nice places there in the font <laughs> exactly. <and> blue <laughs> no it's uh yeah miami is an interesting place Ooh. and i think miami i think any beach. Anyone that sort of um, has the opportunity to travel and is open-minded, it's a good place to go, but also you don't want to get lost there because it's an easy place for people to get lost. And, um, but it's also interesting to see how um, a city and an atmosphere or an environment can sort of like consume you. You know, and it could just wrap itself around you. So it's it's an interesting spot. And so did Miami sort of teach you? If you're you not careful, like if you don't have something to hold it down, oof, it teach me a lot. I'd say, apart from everything I learned in classes in college, it taught yeah. me a lot. Oh, well, it taught me want. to start. Like I started to really learn how to deal with people in Miami. and elaborate on that you can how would you elaborate on that so it was like the first time um let's say i had to for example academically and professionally network like when i started uh first of all meet people with different cultures which i feel it's so Enriching is it enriching a word. Yeah, yeah, enriching. Well, like it's rewarding. You get to even from talking to someone. Yeah, and like so enriching, even rewarding. Let's say exactly to talk with someone that let's say you've never met before, and just to like listen to their perspectives on what whatever topic it could be in class, it could be at a bar. So because of that you start to learn to be more open-minded because if you in santo domingo it does that a lot of people i'd say that the people that live here or have been raised here not all of them might be generalizing but it's so easy to like be close-minded in the city and miami it came to a point that i told myself like what are, you're in you're in another country you're in a new city by yourself but at the same time you're surrounded by people that you've known for over 20 years and you're going out with the same people you're doing different things in different places but how different are they so it came to a point that i started to like doing things my way and maybe not maybe to my friends not but like trying to do, do new things with new people. And it's just such, you start feeling that you're really like out there when you start listening to new ideas, start doing new things. And that's where like the danger comes when you want to the carrilla demasiado, like when you're so, happy about us, oh, there's so much, there's so many new things. I've never felt this before. I've never tried this before that. Yeah. That's where you gotta like be strong. And Miami helped me do that, helped me do that for sure. You try so many things, so many new experiences that it's like, okay, now I know how that feels, but I know what it can do to me. So I gotta stay on track. And Miami was the perfect spot for me to, so, and then level two was Sosua, which that was way out of my comfort zone. It's such a new experience, but it was so enriching as well. 
but Miami was the like the good training spot before. Yeah, no, it's definitely my other life endeavors. It's definitely like the trenches, I would say. I, you know, I only lived there. I lived in Fort Lauderdale when I was a kid, kid. So I don't really know. But what I do remember from the United States is that American people are very unique uh, in behavior. And they're all the wild cards. So any American who's probably listening to this can either nod or they'll be like, that's not us. And that's probably the wild card I'm talking about. Yeah, That's probably yep. the guy. That, and is <laughs> that is you. And um, it's really insane because this is the only place in the world where I've ever been at 12 o'clock outside of Walmart and hear a family yelling at each other saying, I'm going to kill you for getting into the front seat because I want the front seat. You know, stuff like this. As I'm American like, as it gets, man. That's and then one that's... guy is just trying to fit the 55 inch TV in the back seat while these two guys are about to go brawling. <laughs> And this is at 12 o'clock, and this is not even a joke. This is uh, something that every at a time Walmart, I go, the fact that it's in a Walmart, Walmart parking lot just. Every time I go to Orlando for that surf expo, I would always go to a Walmart at 12 o'clock at night because it's a zoo. It's hilarious. You go in there, the, the parking lot and... is, is full. And people have this excuse like, oh, you know, but these are the guys that get off work late at night and they don't have time to go do the shopping and this and that. I'm uh -huh. like, what type of lifestyle is this? You know, this is just insanity. And it's just midnight. never stopping. It's like one guy said, United States is just one big shopping mall. And I think that sort of puts the finger on it in a way. That's pretty accurate. It's just like a <laughs> nonstop going thing with partying, with purchasing, with consuming. And anything can happen like at any, at any time moment. of the day, at oh. any moment. When you're least expecting it, right? but at the same time, Americans have. I mean, they're the most sophisticated. Well, and Canada as well. Canada's pretty cool, but this part of the country, they're as sophisticated as it gets, and they're so organized. They most of the time they go by the rules, which makes things work. Sometimes sure. they don't, but. A lot of yeah, times USA. It's a special country, and no, it's pretty. The, like it has, it's really beautiful as well. That's the thing, though. It's that the the story that they believe is in a way very productive because they all want to work all the time. So there is some good things around it, right? And they mm -hmm. believe in the latter, and they have hope to uh, if they work hard that good things will come. And for sometimes it doesn't come at all, but for there's like a a chance there. But in any case, yeah, no. The fact that you can go into Miami and come out alive is a good thing. I think that's already like a character building sort of event that's or right. experience. Yep. <laughs> you know, also like a spiritual retreat for a year. Oh, that's a that is a spiritual retreat and a half. Like I, I, I there's a song, a sun. It's called um, "Wear Sunscreen," and Ooh. you've heard it. The the speech. The yeah, the speech. speech. Yep. I have one advice to give you where well, sunscreen, sunscreen. And, and with that it's like the I think it says um, live in New York but don't stay leave before it makes you cold yeah leave before it makes you cold and then uh, live in California but leave before it makes you soft yeah yeah you know, they should throw in Miami there they didn't but <laughs> maybe for the remix the yeah, that'd be for the, the three places yeah, yeah. that the United States has to offer because it's just insane. Oh, sure. That triangle there. That's the Bermuda Cali, Triangle. I feel, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> New York, Cali, and Miami, for sure. Florida as a state is insane. Miami's just like the Latin epicenter, but Florida as a state is cool. But Cali has, I've only I've only been like really young to Cali, like maybe 13, something like that, but I want to I wanna go back. It Cali seems has good vibes to it. Yeah. yeah. Now with this whole tax thing, I don't know what's the actual situation in on land because everyone business wise seems like they're raging, mm -hmm. but maybe the mm -hmm. people are still digging it. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if the people are still nice. Yeah. We'll adapt. A couple of years, maybe a couple of months, but, but, but yeah, business wise, Cali is. Yes, it seems like uh, take a look up. pretty done. Though pretty with advanced. that, so you made it out of Miami. And then you ended up going to Berlin, 
Madrid. I'm guessing all in the same feet. So is there anything like any highlights there? Anything that? Uh, from Europe? Yeah, on the top of mind. Because was it your first time in Europe? Ever? Um, I had visited before. I had ah. visited. I have family in Germany and in London, so I visited. It was my first time in Spain, though. But in Europe, I'd been, I'd been there for a while. And how was living there then? Was that um, like how was that some... living there compared to to America? Like, did you feel a big difference, or it's, similar? You could, if you didn't know how the planet Earth works, you could say you're in another planet. It's and it's literally the new world. They are, they are the first ones. They're the colonizers, man. Like it's some it's a tough word for a few people, but they society started on that part of the planet, and you feel it. And at the same time, just like walking through the streets of any city in Europe, you feel so much history, from the architecture to the art to the culture to the gas. Uh, Gastronomy, yeah, the food, yeah, gastronomy, the food, yeah, all that. Gastronomy, it's it's an other world, but it also helped me appreciate the sense of customer service that they have in America, in Latin America, in the U.S. Europeans don't believe in customer service. They're oh. there to do their job. They will serve you the food, but they will not go out of their way to make you have a more pleasant time at their establishment, at their local, at their ski resort. They're, they're going to do what they're asked for. They're not going to go beyond. But do you that. think that Europeans care or do they, they don't care? Like, because you're saying they don't have customer service, right? But business is still going. Because people will still go and they are okay with dealing with bad service because they're receiving everything else four or five stars. If the food is good, you're going to be like, you're going to forget you had bad service because of how good the food was. But though, are you saying with that, like, is there any establishment you've seen which was trying to bring an American uh, quality customer service to a five-star European establishment? Is that a thing? Or you're saying like, is that maybe part of the charm that they that they sort of have? Because I deal with like Europeans, right? And mm -hmm. they're very, let's say, like intelligent, um, knowledgeable, mm -hmm. but they all have like this sort of a colder, like totally. If if you don't like it, then take a hike type of attitude, you know? <laughs> like exactly. Like I'm not like, oh, you don't like it? Oh, I'm da. That's bad, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to make you like it. <laughs> yeah. For example, I compare a lot. My family, we we try to we snow ski. Okay. And we most of the time we've gone to the U.S. to ski, but we went a couple of times in in Europe, and like comparing snow skiing in a ski resort, let's say in Colorado, versus a ski resort in Switzerland. The Switzerland ski resort is so popular and it's so good because of the amazing mountains, the view, the snow is really good. But it, for be, let's say you put a beginner to start skiing in Switzerland, and it's, they're gonna have a tough time. They're gonna get lost. They're not gonna go. They're not gonna know where to go. They're not gonna know where the trail ends. While in the U.S., you compare it, and everything is so well marked. If someone sees you get hurt or lost, they're going to come right up. Because ah, they get sued if they don't help you. <laughs> if they don't have a sign there. <laughs> yeah, you guys should have put a sign that, here, guys. There's a cliff. I didn't know. Why is there in it? Yeah. And I think that's sort of why the Europeans, they don't care, but they give less fucks about what happened. Like, but they're with that, more centered than them. Like, this might seem a little bit off topic, but this sort of um they don't care about the customer service let's say like they're not putting as many signs up or they're not really babying you all the time like pampering you mm -hmm. do you think that makes a better person in the end like a like europeans might be a little bit better than americans or north americans because they're less soft they're more independent like you can give them something and they're like all right i'll figure it out i got it 
you know, instead of like, hey, this is where you have to go and your room is right next to the 302, your 303, it's next to 304 and mm -hmm. there's, there's a, a white paint stain. So just look for the white paint stain and we're going to have Bob you know the, come with you. Yeah, so he guides you know where to go. So you know the term malcriado, the Dominican term malcriado? Yeah, but what are you going to translate that to? That's, that's like spoiled. That, okay, that, that yeah, would be, yeah. I'd say, spoiled. If you're a malcriado or spoiled, it's because you've had everything put in front of you and made all your decisions be easy. Like you know where you to go or where you're supposed, to, what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. While in Europe, if you're not told where to what and you have to go look for it and find out where it is, yeah, it makes you. I mean survival of the fittest man if you have to adapt and overcome more obstacles it's going to make you a stronger person smarter like all around it's just gonna make you be let's say how how would i put this well you have to be on your toes you have to be active you actually have to think. always always exactly you have to work for yourself in order to get the the outcome that you're trying like it's not going to be put in front it's not it's not going to be as easy as, as it is as it is here in the in America, there you have to go out and I'll go out and, and you're going to have to learn another language. You're going to have, I have friends from Spain that they, that we met in a summer camp in Raymond, Maine in 2005. And they were having the worst time because they didn't know the language and they were literally spent to this summer camp on a lake with a bunch as American as you can imagine kids to be with a bunch of them to learn the language. And it was hard for the Europeans, but I feel that it will be harder for American kids to go at that young age to Europe to like, boom, go there. Try to figure but it if out. you, yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, Europeans, I'd say they had growing up, they'd have to adapt and overcome a lot more than what Americans have. And you're saying this because you also said like, ah, Europeans are sort of like where uh, everything came out of, right? Like they're the first, like, um, I forgot what word you used. Um, yeah. You didn't use empires, you used uh, colonizers, Colonizer. colonizers, right? Yeah. But what about Asia? Have you ever been to Asia? Well, Asia is the first, like- Exactly, yeah, that's what I'm saying. To... Like, cause like- Yeah. Asia is the first, the first. I've been to, to Thailand, went to Thailand 2004. But it's, that is another planet as well. That is a farther away planet. That's what I'm saying. So you're, have, you're saying Europe, but I'm like, the, the Europeans to the, China, to the Asians, right? Is like the Europeans to the Americans. Farther west you go, the yeah. oldest, we can say. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So but that is, I wish I'd like know more about Asian culture and I still want like desire to travel at some time in my life and like spend a month there speaking to monks and stuff. But even why, in Europe, why, why just so, monks? Where did that come from? Where, 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 what? I don't know, man. Don't you feel that monks are like so wise and you can just chill with them and see what to do and be like, okay, tell me your elevator pitch. What <laughs> is going on in your mind? They'll just walk away. That's the pitch. <laughs> and then you stay like, oh, you just walked away. The wise guy. But yeah, I think Asian culture and even like in Europe that you're so much closer and have so much more influence to Asia. It's so different that you don't, you don't relate it as much. Yeah, it's hard like, to, it's hard to wrap your head around, you know, people, mm -hmm. it's so different that people think they're weird. Cause they're like, wait, what? Exactly. Like, what's going on? But it's just there's I got, I had the five thousand years to... of programming there. <laughs> exactly. Literally, I had the opportunity to to like make friends with a bunch of um, Chinese that we that were, were in the master's program together, and they were first of all super rich, like crazy rich, and yeah. they were in Madrid, and they spoke like for their capacity, such good Spanish. And you see that they tried so hard. Well, not try so hard, but they will bring you like random gifts any given day. And 
you'd feel that they're so interested in knowing about your upbringing, about your country, because as we see them, like as different as they are, they also see us as like, do seeing like Asians seeing us dance, they thought like these guys have superpowers. How do they move their body, their legs like that? And then we see them do math and we're like, what the hell? But that's what's so interesting about like such different cultures colliding and just getting drunk together and seeing such different perspectives when we're in the same planet. The it's same cool, planet. it's cool. I think that's one of the best things of traveling. And... But traveling with a close mind, it's not traveling. You have to travel and be okay to sit down next to a stranger and say what's up and maybe end up at a bar. And with that being said, you said traveling with a closed mind is like, well, you didn't even finish that sentence really, but- I'm not traveling, that's not traveling. That's moving, that's not you, traveling. So, so that's, you said one thing, which was, you know how tourists are, they get insane. That's what you said at one point. And are those people that get insane the ones that are usually more closed-minded or is it the open-minded ones and they just went too far? I'd say both types of people will get different types of insane. But the open-minded will get a better type of insane than the closed-minded. I'd say it would be more dangerous for the closed-minded to go insane than the open-minded. Because I'd say that closed-minded people will go insane by themselves maybe while open-minded people they're mostly most of the time they're going to be in a group or open to be in a group and yeah i don't you know four eyes always see better than two even if you're both <laughs> insane but it's good to have someone's back but i think that traveling even to close-minded people it broadens up your your mentality and your weight like if you're traveling you're like okay I'm traveling, I'm leaving my hometown or whatever, which I love to relate Cabarete to this. This is a perfect example. So, Cabarete, of course, you know. You know when, let's say, long weekends that Cabarete gets packed with people from all over, but let's say the Santiagueros, Los Capitaleños, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. everyone goes insane. Sure. Anything can happen in Cabarete on a long weekend. And I feel that it relates to that. It's like, okay, I'm still in my country, but I am so far from Santo Domingo. And in my mind, I know that everybody else here has the same mentality. They're gonna have fun. They're gonna not care who's watching. They're gonna be like, okay, I'm here for me. I'm at the beach at a club next to the beach. I'm doing me. And I think that's what happens to traveling, but just farther away from Cabarete. The closest thing to traveling we have here in the island is Cabarete. Is going to Cabarete. That's that's exactly. where traveling begins. Exactly. <laughs> Up in the north coast. Up in the north coast of the Caribbean. No, it's uh, Cabarete. Like, there's this place. I have a cup. It's called uh, it's called the melting pot, and I think that's sort of what Cabarete is. It's like the melting pot. The melting just everything pot. sort of comes in and just comes together, and uh, it could be for good. It could be for bad. You know, depends what type of people you get, but uh, definitely something something's there and you're sort of right like traveling whether it's far or even like nationally you know depending where you live in the world i think there's probably very few places that well i guess other islands might be a challenge to find different sort of cultures even though mm -hmm. um because i'm trying to think like if you lived on turks and caicos that thing is very small so yeah that's really small so I think there's, there's the same people on one side of the island. We can relate it even one. to Puerto Rico, man. I think Puerto Rico, I've never been, but Puerto Rico, I believe it's really similar to how we're used to living here. In what sense? Like, first of all, the culture is pretty similar. I think that Dominicans and Puerto Ricans get along as well as we do, but at the same time have this sort of competition about who's the coolest Caribbean, who's the coolest island and stuff. Yeah. But from the music to the food to the mentality to being like super hey que pasa? welcoming mm -hmm. but we we're still more welcoming but i think that like living in puerto rico 
like you're able to travel around the island like say in, what maybe three days five days like that's here pretty you big. can travel around the island really but it's not i think we're but bigger, would you we're say bigger. people in puerto rico they're different in different places like there's different types of puerto ricans is that what you're saying because here people are different like someone from las Terenas or even samana is way different than someone from the capital even though they oh, like totally they, totally they, totally they're both but yeah Dominican. i believe i'm not as familiar with puerto rican like yeah like hear about and everything but i i i believe yeah i mean the regions affect super different if you're from bayamon it's not gonna be the same as the people from san juan i believe yeah from the same so but it, i'd say it's the same with every country every yeah. city has its different upbringings and they're gonna have the similarities because of the same nationality but living like in a city let's say mm-hmm. than growing up okay live, coming up in miami and coming up in a town in wisconsin you're both as american as it gets but you totally different american you are you'll be a totally different breed of american <laughs> totally different yeah that is true a different breed for sure and because i'm just like connecting some dots here like mm-hmm. so you because uh, i'm taking i'm gonna take also again a couple steps back because you mentioned you mentioned europe you mentioned sort of the personas that you found in europe like sort of like how you see it you mentioned the united states um sort of mentioned that the europeans are a little bit harder and more developed than the uh american counterparts whether it's north or south america in a way like because mm-hmm. of the the fact that uh, um, I'm not saying that they're all malcreado, but that was sort of like yeah, a, <laughs> we're more malcreado. Like we're we're more we had it easier than um, other exactly. places. Mm-hmm. What I, does, I, don't know, I don't know if I would say more developed, but or not even maybe not even more advanced, but just more down to earth. I think Europeans appreciate more the small things than Americans. Are. Okay, so you're saying the Europeans are more down to earth. Yeah. What about the and then the Asians? Uh, that's another. That's. The what about Spanish. the Asians that you met in Spain? How were they? How do you? How does is that? Would that give you nah, a realistic? Were, uh, no, no, no. No. They were really malcriados as well, in a good way though, in a good way. Okay. But they were so educated and. But for example, they they weren't really responsible in classes and stuff they wouldn't do their work they wouldn't participate they were just there because they had to be there gotcha to learn spanish yeah. but i love all my asians hey in case in case they're watching you you, <laughs> you never know you never know so yeah. <laughs> you never know actually uh so then you did university you did work you did a master's uh, are you going to keep studying out of curiosity? Is that happen? Is that a thing on the list in reality, or, or is it still? Is it sort of over? Dude, I've thought about it. Like, what? Maybe another master's or like a course. I think you're never. You should never stop learning. Um, I but know do that. You need, my parents... Do you need the paper to prove it? Type of thing. In this world, yeah, for sure. I'm ah, yeah. In the, in the, yeah. I'd say that diplomas are overrated, but they're super necessary. So, because you said that you got the diploma and then you got your first job, right? And well, I got my first job before the diploma, like as a um, intern while I was in college. Ah, okay. Because I thought you said like you finished, and then they're like, ah, "Okay, cool, get to work" type thing. Like, who cares? You know, like start working. Yeah, yeah, like after, and I think that all of us that have graduated from something, the months and sometimes the years after you get that diploma are so like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Like, we thought that we're going to get the diploma and it's going to be boom right away. Yeah, money in the bank. It's not the case. (laughs) 
so so what is the case run it run it down for people people that are on the on the path of enlightenment through the conveyor belt of uh further education schooling university colleges what is the reality of it okay the first thing i tell them is to enjoy the moment because it's not gonna get easier being a student it's so easy right now and well okay it's not so easy but it's easier than what's coming because in what sense your because your responsibilities as a student let's i'm talking about a full-time student is to pass the class if you want to get straight a's that's a plus but your responsibilities are do enough homeworks and attend classes enough to pass your class your classes until you get your diploma after you have that diploma which it's not hard to get you don't need like it's superpowers yeah no no i i don't want to say i did minimum effort but I got, you might just I be got a smart more. guy though that's maybe why you're able to pull it off I'd say more than smart, it's yeah. like it's, it's a mixture of smart, cleverness, street smart. Yeah. And also like you have to be somewhat responsible. There has to be some sort of responsibility sense in there. But after that, after you have your diploma, it's like nothing is for sure. Nothing is for sure. You might spend two days applying to, uh, two months, sorry, applying to a new job every day. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're going to get the job. And when you do, it doesn't mean that it's going to be your dream job. And it could mean that you're going to be in that job for as long as you let yourself. It could be years before you find something that is like, hey, I like what I'm doing. I don't hate my boss. I don't hate waking up every morning. Which, luckily, I consider that I never dreaded waking up to do something I've had to do that day. But a lot of people, they wake up sad for years until they decide to. And why is that? What is the difference between someone that wakes up sad and someone that doesn't wake up sad? If you like what you're doing, you don't have to work a day in your life. Some guy said that. Yeah, some guy. But yeah, Michael Scott. I think that was Henry Ford. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or Ben Franklin one of those, no, one of those. Again, so. but no the fact is that Ray Kroc working <laughs> working can mean like it means it could mean so many different things yeah because what, what do you when you listen to work, work what is it wake up and make money I think it's just doing something right I see like everything is work in a way Almost, you know, working on yourself. Everything that requires a some sort of productivity from you. Like, I'm sorry, I'm, that's working on a book, right? I'm that's working right. on this, working on that. So, yeah, I think that's uh. So wait, sorry, like finish up that thought though, because I think you sort of left it there. You. So you're... when you're working for anything, yeah. Most of the time, I'd say ninety-five percent of the time, you're expecting some money in return. That's what you're working for. Is that what you work for? To for money, but because money brings me and I can be honest, not a lot of money like right now, but it gave me a sense of tranquility that I don't have to depend on anyone else. But for example, when you went to Mexico, right? You said that was like your first work, like uh like your first real work in a establishment where you are another number I on the payroll another guy yep so and it was what, f- like how yep, was that sorry. like uh how how was that experience going into into that in a sense like because that's the reality for most for everyone yeah. right for 99 percent of the people uh in the world that's a reality. You join a big establishment. And also, so this is going to be a follow-up. So maybe if you, mm-hmm. if you think and remember all these things. 
So now you're working in a smaller establishment, probably with, let's say, less than 10 people. I don't know how many people work there, but maybe five 15, people, 10, 15, no, yeah. 15 people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you work in a team of 15. When you worked in Mexico, I'm assuming that was thousands of people in the hotel. Employees? Yeah. Or including employees, employees. I'd say, yeah, reaching a thousand, a little less than a thousand. Okay. But it was two. It was like a thousand rooms uh, between two the two hotels that I was working in. Yeah. Like a thousand, like twelve hundred rooms, I think it was something like that. And in the department that I was is one of the ones that you have to deal with people from all other departments, mm -hmm. from food and beverage for entertainment, of course, for uh, management and all that. So how do you and see that though, like? So first going into uh, an, a, a large establishment, right? How do you find the energy and the motivation to really perform your best, you know? And mm -hmm. how do you feel, like, how do you get a sense of reward in that work? Because it's not like the boss is coming up every day and saying, good job, Fabricio, you killed it today. And he's not Never. there giving you that pep talk in the morning saying, mm -hmm. hey, did you wake up? Did you make sure to put on that new t-shirt? Are you ready? Yeah, have a killer day. New day. Yep. Right. Dude, I'd say that in all of the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. the most rewarding thing for your job is receiving some sort of good feedback of whatever you did. Even a smile works. Gotcha. Like your job, well, my job at the moment was literally to be able to ensure that you the client were having the best time possible that you like the food that you're having fun that you feel safe that you don't get sick if you do that don't you eat, don't get eat the ice soon. <laughs> the ice oh, yeah. so sewer ice oh my god <laughs> but so yeah even when you don't when you don't receive feedback from your superiors you try to find it in the people that are paying for your salary which are your clients yeah and as satisfying as it is to hear someone thank you uh best vacations of the life they love it here they had so much fun they don't want to leave when you read or listen to the bad and the negative feedback <clears throat> that hurts like a bitch you feel responsible for the bad experience of that. But at the yeah. time, were you aware, like, for example, if that happened, you were, were you aware, like, I could have done a better job? Or was it like in hindsight, after they wrote a review, a week later, when they got home, they're like, yo, you know, that one guy, uh, F that guy. <laughs> Dude, okay, so story time. It Just could be a story time. Back, yeah. Going back to Sosua, or when I was a guest service at Sosua, which also pretty big team. I was in charge of the weddings. Why? I don't know. Never planned a wedding in my life, but I was in charge of the weddings for tourists that desire to have their wedding on a island in the Caribbean with other family. And one of my first weddings, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this by myself. I'm not going to ask for help. I'm going to get the flowers. I'm going to get the decorators, everything. Mm, everything was going so well. People were so happy. It was French Canadians mixed with Latins. So we know the best. you've dealt with French Canadians in Cabaret, don't you? I live with it. <laughs> so, you know, dude, so they had, we even had like a DJ at the beach for them. Like I made a stage only for them at the beach and I made two mistakes, which I'll never forget. First was that I didn't inform them before the, the event, the party, that the DJ had to shut down at 11 o'clock because of the other rooms. Mm -hmm. And second, I didn't charge the whole, the whole check, or the whole package, the whole wedding package yeah, in the beginning. before the event. Is that a normal procedure though? Like, was that your rookie mistake or? It was a, it was a rookie mistake. I think for everything, play it safe and charge everything up front before because people will find any excuse for to pay discounts yeah, yeah, or sure. to not pay anything. 
Have you ever done that, by the way? Have you ever tried to find an excuse to not pay the full price? For sure, for sure. We Dominicans, we're regadiadores. We try to negotiate anything. Well, what would but be the most ridiculous thing you've ever tried to negotiate down? To negotiate? Like, re negotiate down, like... You're just doing it just uh, whatever the word you just use, regateador, regateador. Regatear, regatear. Regatear. <laughs> Do I think? Like, you, you, you're, like you're, taking an, you're taking a water bottle out of the gas station, you're just undoing the core of drinking from it. You're like, how much is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't got that, and guys. They're going to they're gonna say, oh, 70 pesos. And you're like, nah, this one doesn't taste like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh. The classic is like, no, no, give me the Dominican fee. I'm not, I'm not American. Give me the Dominican fee. Yo soy de lo tuyo, viejo. ¿Qué pasa? Soy de aquí, me quiere truquear. <laughs> but dude, for everything. Like, I, I have to buy aguacates in the street ah, for, okay, for sure, the business sure. now. And if I can bring it down 10 pesos, not oh. that I need 10 pesos, but just for the sake of it. You know, you, as low as you can go. But, like, if it's, like, handwork and, you know, the peel, like, the if I try to negotiate and then the vendor or anything is like, no, nah, man, like I can't go lower than that. It's like, okay, I respect that. Here it is. Here you go. I'm, yeah. I'm willing to pay for that because I require your service or I acquired your product. And that's the price that's you it. have. And yeah. There are things that you won't, you won't negotiate, but there's a lot of things you can and you will. Anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. Yeah, I forget that here, everything is pretty much negotiable. <laughs> Except... Except one thing I've been thinking about: people never go into a restaurant and ask for discounts. No, because they, they it's that's the thing about menus. It's like, hey, it, it no, is what it is. It's you that. go into a store, right, and then they say, "Oh, it's fifty bucks." So, like, yo, can you give me a discount on that? Mm -hmm. But oh, at a classic? restaurant, no one ever goes like, "Oh, this uh, eggs Benedict is two fifty. Give it to me for 200 no, nah, because restaurants like okay, you decided to come in here, like you can eat somewhere else. <laughs> this is what it is. But for example, in Miami, with always like anywhere I go shopping or rest, like, oh, you guys have student discount, yeah, on kind a of student budget, man. And a bunch of places did and international discounts and stuff. But yeah, yeah, I took you off your story, I took you off your story. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, the wedding, okay. Wedding. So, long story short, so you forgot to charge them up front. And, and you forgot I, to tell them I about the like half limited of it, hours. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, you can give me the, the other. You can give me the other part after the wedding. Big mistake, big mistake. So 11 p.m. comes and the wedding was at the beach. So I have rooms nearby. And I'm like, guys, I'm going to give you half an hour. OK, they're, they're already stupid drunk. I'm going to give you half an hour. And then we have to move the party inside of the, the like the disco, the hotel's mm -hmm. disco because of the rooms and the noise. And then they started saying, no, I paid for my DJ. I don't want to go to the disco. I want to stay here. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. That's, I'm going to give you half an hour more, but you guys have to go in. Like People are trying to sleep. Mm -hmm. They started getting violent. And they were like, nope, I'm not leaving. And then I was like, okay, you're not leaving. Fuck it. I'm going to sleep. Security, just unplug the DJ. And everything. <laughs> Horrible idea. Because you know how, like, yeah how square people. securities and hotels are yeah. like, okay, this is what they told me to do i did it i don't first of all i don't understand what you're trying to tell me yeah. but the music's stopping dude those people were super drunk get me fabricio what the fuck is going on here i want my music I'm not gonna and i was sound asleep the next day oh you woke up the next day so you didn't get any no one came to bother you no nah, nah, nah. i was like okay I'm dedicated, I had dedicated my the whole week to those to those people for the wedding. And it was a great wedding, man. It, it worked out perfect. So then we had to charge them. They were like, I'm not paying. You guys cut us off. They didn't <laughs> want to pay the rest of the fee. And if I hadn't been who I who I was or the son of who I was, Fire. they were gonna they were supposed to charge me whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like it was a fireball, fireable situation easily. But then the manager got involved, people got involved. They they had to give them a discount because they were like, no, other tourists came in. It was a shit show. They had to give them a discount, but at the end, they ended up paying. And they wrote this two-page long review, which ended, and I quote, no one in this hotel, specifically Fabricio Dominguez, the name and last name, should 
even tried to attempt to arrange a wedding. That was like the last sentence. And the That's day that they paid, I remember your... I got blacked out, wasted. I was just so like relieved. Ended up like crying in a chimney outside El Bate in Sosua, something like that. Really, but that was like you see, that was the biggest lesson I've learned. I never, never, not charge the full, full amount up front before anything, because you're gonna find the most minimal thing that went sort of wrong to pay yeah. you less. And be transparent. Let them let people know all the information and all the rules beforehand. Yeah, but I, also, if I told them before, like they wouldn't. You, know. you think you think that though? If yeah, I told them before, yeah. Uh, they they would have they would have tried and stuff, but I'd I'd be like, hey guys, here it is. I wrote it down. You saw it. You signed. So. True. It's all in the contract, guys. It's all in the contract. You didn't read the fine print. You didn't read between the lines. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> gotta see the small print. Oh, man. But if it's there, so like, yeah. So, so I think so. Sua taught me more than Miami. So Sua taught me a lot. What does the Sua teach you? Do the stanky way of life, man. The so Sua way of life. And what does that? What does the that sort of positivity in the North Coast, dude? I think that everyone up there is just so much happier with a simpler way of living yeah all Why year is round that? all year round this thing is just less commotion of people less people getting not in their way but people mind their own business and when they don't it's like what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Like I'm, everyone does themselves. I'm doing me. There's a lot of like party going on so as well, and you know, like I had to deal with a lot of like policemen and yeah, sure, a lot of everything. Stuff. Even I had child molesters, like tourists getting involved, crazy stuff. Yeah. But. It makes you open your eyes, man. First of all, the country that you're living in and the thousands of obstacles we are behind in and we still have to accomplish. But it, I don't know, it's like, it gave me sort of accomplishment, a sense of accomplishment, like doing the right things and helping either tourists or- Or locals. Or locals do the right thing. No, it's Ooh, um crazy stuff, crazy stuff. It's sort of like uh, just what you're sort of saying before is that you know when you're traveling or when you're dealing in a tourism industry, you're dealing with like everything. Like all the cultures are different, people see things differently. So you as uh, guest services, let's say, or you interacting with these individuals have to be open-minded in a way. There's no way to do it with a closed mind you know, because it's like how you wouldn't understand. You'd be like, why is he doing mm -hmm. that? Or why is she doing that? Or why are they not talking to me or smiling to me? You know, and you just have to be like, oh, wait, that guy. Why are they acting these... this way or doing one thing or the other? Yeah. And what do you, what do you think about then stereotypes? You know, like there's always all types of stereotypes about Latin people or Americans or Europeans or Asians or Russians. Like, do you think they're true uh, for the I most think, part? Do you think there's some truth behind stereotypes? If there's stereotypes, is because they have some sort of truth in them. Yeah, I think they generalize a lot. Like, mm -hmm. of course, not all Americans are fat or not. Maybe all Russians do drink too much vodka, but <laughs> that's for the stereotypes, you know? If they be, if something became a stereotype, it's because it's somewhat true, exaggerated and generalized, of course. But even like knowing about those stereotypes helps you help you understand the different cultures more. 
and that was actually sort of a part that I was going to say is like, do stereotypes sort of help you at least initiate um, communication with someone? Totally, totally. And even it's, it's a topic of conversation, you know, like without offending someone, you can be like, ha, huh, relate you to this or. Yeah. Hey, you drink vodka. Exactly. But it's very important, like for me, even with sensible topics to make sure it sounds with some sense of humor. So no one, it's so easy to interpret, interpret that you're being disrespected. Disrespectful. But it's easy. Sorry? Like disrespectful to the person you're saying. Like you don't want to come exactly. off as you're being disrespecting to them. Oh, okay. Never, never, never. Because yeah. if that's how the conversation starts, it's so easy to go downhill from there. Oh, instantly. <laughs> yeah, right away. Right away. So then uh we jumped around a lot of stuff but um <laughs> and this is also like there's maybe a couple of things that i want to touch up on and then because it's also getting not it is late but i feel like the energy is still there so i think there's some things yeah. that you could probably shed some yeah but it's like 11 i think uh i think though you could shed some light on some things yeah, so. because you went down the For path sure. which was you said Okay, once you go to university, one thing that people should be aware about is that life doesn't get easier. And what I think could be a good thing is like, how did you, did that reality hit you and how did you cope with it? It hit like the first time I had to look for a job, let's say. I realized, so after graduation, I didn't want to come back. I wanted to find a job and stay in Miami. And I dedicated a lot of time and energy to find a job that was worth me staying, like not coming back. And what was worth you staying? What would that equate to money or opportunity? Yeah, it would equate to money because it would have meant that I wouldn't have to ask for my parents for money. Like if I could find a job that would help me pay for my own housing in Miami and food, I would have stayed. And I you couldn't even find that. But I, okay, so another story time. I thought for one, there was this one time that I got a job after, like right after graduation. And I was so excited, like, oh, I got this, I'm going to stay. And it ended up being selling TV cable in Walmart with stag y corbata or a tie and a suit and tie every day a different walmart or a different target just standing in the hallways and trying to get people to talk to you and buying you either i think it was like direct tv or dish or something but that lasted a week like Why? three days in i'm like okay this is not worth it man three walmarts later you're like because no. Yeah, I'm not gonna. No, 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 no. I just and it it paid like commission. Mm. So you could work for a month, and if you didn't sign any deals, it would have been like no. And I'm like, yeah, Fabrizio, you want to stay? And wait, see? Hello. Eh? Claro, y de lo caro también. Is my the Chiquita? Half time show. Half time show. Oh, yeah. The dog. Uh, hey, what Mouth. is that? A little Chihuahua? What, is that? what are those dogs? A Pomeranian. Pomeranian, yeah. Pomerania. Just bark and they're pretty in bark. That's all they do. <laughs> um, where were we? The sales job. Uh, oh yeah, so the sales. So I, I realized like, hey, good thing you got a job, but it's not worth it. Like, no. It didn't feel satisfying. 
Not at all, not at all. And at the same time, we're thinking, I just spent four years of my life studying. To come yeah. sell some I cable. got a diploma, yeah, I'm worth more than this. And at the end, like, I, I'm 100% took the right decision coming back. So, so what happened? And after that, when I started working so so is that I realized that I wanted to dedicate myself to the tourism industry. So if maybe if I would have find a job in finance in Miami, I never, never would have realized or would have realized by now. Too late, maybe. Mm -hmm. So then with but that- yeah, As I said, like, as we were saying that it doesn't get easier. Yeah. Go with the flow. Trust the process. It'll, it'll happen. No force, no force, never. So then what would, but what does that mean? Because for some people, go with the flow, do nothing. Oh, okay, go with the flow. Let me just chill. Let me just take it easy. Don't, do you think you should still at least keep pushing a little bit? Like, you, you can't, you can't do nothing. Do something? For sure. Like going with the flow doesn't mean lay back and wait for something to happen. Yeah. Like there are certain decisions you have to make. So things happen. And when do those things, when do those decisions come? By the day, by the day, like it could be a simple decision to pick up a phone call. Like you're like, oh, I don't want to speak with this person right now. Yeah. If you don't, I mean, don't take it. It's not on purpose. That's another like really important lesson that I'm, I'm actually learning now. You can't make everyone happy. It's impossible. It'll drown you if you try to make everyone happy. That's not gonna happen. And you come first, man. Like if you don't want to speak with someone, if you don't want to relate with someone, because it doesn't bring, it doesn't. Si no te aporta nada, if it yeah, if it doesn't like, bring you any sort of value, yeah. let's say. Why? If it doesn't bring you value, it's going to bring you down. It's one of the two. So how have you seen, like, I don't know how you were when you were younger, younger, but did you first have a lot of friends? Like, do you, how do you see yourself? Like, do you have a lot of close <laughs> friends or do you have a lot of acquaintances? So, because then I'm guessing you're sort of selective with where you put in your time and your energy not at all not at all i have way too too many close friends you have way too, too many acquaintances and why, what do you many. mean by too many like you're trying to reduce this or, or um, you're just saying like, i'm not i'm not eliminating them now but yeah. i do have to say i dedicate a lot of energy to a lot of people but i like listening to people as well but maybe I've exceeded the amount of listens too much. So I get a lot of people's problems. Sure. I try I try to not have them affect mine because I have my own problems as well. But how I see it is that people feel good talking to me. I enjoy listening to them. But yeah. it came to a point that it was draining my energy as well. So I had to learn, I, I am currently learning how to say no more. I'd say that's one of my biggest weaknesses. Yeah, well, you said yes to this, and, so you pretty much fucked up. Oh no, but I was, I was, <laughs> I was excited for this. Cause I like listening, but I like talking a lot. I like being heard. So, and like, uh, you've always, you've always been super curious about like a lot of stuff. Yeah, sure. Is this the beginning? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Now, me, what I'm more well, interested yeah. in is, like, I feel there's a global, um, there's a lot of global trends happening, and they all seem different, but I sort of see how they, or at least I believe that they interconnect in one way or another. They and intertwine, for sure. It's like, all around the world, you see people um, dissatisfied, unmotivated, a little bit lost, and... Then you also see the chaos that happens within governments. You see the corruption that is within countries, within establishments. And there's not much structures anymore for people to sort of base themselves off of is what I feel. 
and even university now university is more of a business right and the business model is great because they're telling you if you don't go you won't be anything you're not gonna be successful. so here's the pen sign right here <laughs> you know and thousands of dollars they, they they sold it so well because they're like they sold it like it's water you know they're like you need this to live guys mm-hmm so you're not gonna wanna, you're not gonna live die? correctly if you don't <laughs> exactly so it's very interesting and and what i'm curious about is like where is this all gonna lead to you know what are the solutions and what i'm sort of coming into like what i'm sort of uh wrapping my head around let's say is that there's not one ideal solution you know there's not a one size fits all sort of um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thing that you can do but what is important sort of like what you're saying is that you have to be a little bit more relaxed but also i think to be more relaxed you can't have so many stimulations all the time whether that's like from the external you know you can't be drowning yourself in instagram drowning yourself in youtube and facebook and um nonsense and reality because that's not your head your head is going to be filled up with stuff and your environment plays a key role in your um in your development right so if you're circled by chaos you know like if like what they say if you if you hang around the barber shop long enough you're gonna get a haircut exactly, exactly. so if you're hanging around negative uh if you're feeling and not hanging around only physically it's just more mentally and now we're all, always stimulated and it's like people don't have the time to sort of think and chill and take it easy and that's what you probably have seen is that you can hang out with people that are um they're worth hundreds of thousands or millions mm-hmm. they have everything they ever you could anyone could ever dream of and then they still it's just not working out for them no no and then they're, not, people, they're not happy they're not genuinely happy yeah you see people that are just chilling on the beach in some random town maybe in mexico maybe in susua and they're high as a kite having the blast of like the best time of their life and then and you feel it when you're close to them you're like and you question yourself like there are people that are, don't understand how people that don't have a lot can be so happy well that's what be... we say is like they don't have a lot you know like oh what do you mean how are you mm-hmm. happy you don't even have the new iphone you're using some the things the screen is cracked and you said it's been cracked for five years and you're still using yeah. it you know what's going on and they're like it works what i use it for it, it helps it works i don't need anything more this is what i need but what yeah, that I sort of that... what does that spark in you then when you see that like when you when is it happiness i'd say that the joy more than happiness is joy it's it's <laughs> it's in the little things i mean first of all you can't try to be happy by making others happy like that can bring you ha- that can bring you joy making others happy it brings me a lot of joy making others happy but i can't depend my happiness on other people no one should depend what you waste or what you focus your energy on which which i feel that should be oneself like are you healthy is your family healthy everything else comes comes along after that but your mentality like what you're thinking is what you're going to attract if you have the mentality that oh i don't have this this person has that i wish i did i would have done something different like if you hold on to regrets and stuff that's weighing you down if it happened worrying about it worrying about it now it's not it's never going to change the fact that it happened yeah and how it happened learn from it and move on because if you don't it's going to be weighing you down until you do the same with forgiveness forgiveness and stuff forgive so but not you, forget how do you find like your happiness
first of all, I consider myself being happy the most important thing in my life. If I find myself uh, Fabricio. that I'm not what's bringing me down, and it's... Wait, Fabricio. So much. You're going to have to repeat everything again. Something bringing me. I either, either I want the ones that have solutions and the ones that don't. If it has a solution and you work to solve that problem, hey, Fabrizio. we're back. We're back. You're back. You're sideways though. Wait, you have to turn your phone. Oh, I think. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Wait, hold it vertical. Hold your phone vertical and turn your camera vertical. off. Okay. And then put it sideways that. again. There you go. Boom. There we go. Uh, you completely cut off when you said, how do you find happiness? So I don't know if, I don't know. Okay. So with happiness, as I, I stopped in the part, did you hear the part of the uh, mentality? Nothing. Okay. So what I was saying is that it's mental. The mental power is it's whatever, you, however you want to see things, it's how they're going to portray. So if you have something that's bothering you, that's weighing you down, that it's affecting your happiness, cut it from the source. If it, there's a problem going on, it's going to be one of the two types of problems. Either they have a solution or they don't. If the problem has a solution and you're going to work towards solving that problem, yeah. there's no need in worrying. Because you're, you're, if you're, you're going to work towards it, you're going to solve it. Because it's bringing you down, and you need to you need to eliminate that problem. If it doesn't have a solution, if it happened, if someone passed away, or there is no use of worrying, because worrying is not gonna solve it, because it's yeah. an unsolvable problem. And by the fact, what what I try to say that there's no use of worrying is that worrying is just gonna make the problem bigger and bigger, and it's never gonna small, because it's not gonna change the past, and it's not going to make something that happened not happen or happen differently. It's just going to be adding more weight to the problem and making it bigger and bigger. And that's how I feel that people sometimes because of something small that affected their happiness, they either get depressed or they make, they hate something because that started with that problem. And hate, as they say, like it's a very powerful word, hate brings you down weighs you down and that's where i think that the root root of sadness or unhappiness is from giving importance to things that don't deserve that importance like they but do you think also hate can in a way motivate you because let's say you're like trying to stop an addiction and you're like i really fucking hate that I keep going back to this addiction, to this vice, to this, this escape. And but I think that I what you to... would hate in that scenario is how you are either because of what you're addicted to. Yeah. So you're hating, you're hating yourself. You're hating yourself, but then you're like, I don't want to hate myself, but I'm going to use I want to this. change. Exactly. Because I hate myself, I'm going to change. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. For sure. If it reaches to a point that you hate yourself and you realize it, yeah. that you have to change the thing is that sadly there's a bunch of people that never stop hating themselves or hating something about themselves yeah and what do you think about that then in the end because you're you mentioned before you said that you you like to talk to people you like to listen to people and if you hear you said you hear a lot of people's problems and dilemmas that they're going through would you mm -hmm. say a lot of the dilemmas what is the percentage of dilemmas that they're like very easily solvable they're like, oh, uh, my boyfriend keeps doing this, 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 and this. And then your solution is like, you should be with another by yourself or you should be with another mm -hmm. guy. And you tell them, they're like, yeah, but. And then they're like, I really like that he buys me flowers on Sundays. So, yeah, you know, like it's just... easy, easier said than done, right? Yeah, like, so do you see that? Because a lot of the problems, like, at least what I find are not that serious. You know, they have a... Um, they they're have not, a, a, an easy fix to them. 
you know and mm -hmm. but people just love to like hang on to this uh to this thing in a way you know like it just makes it easy because then they could they could point at it they be like that's why i'm not who i am or that's not why that's why i did what i did because of this or that and they can point at the problem for days weeks maybe months but when you overlook it they're simple like they're it's not gonna be easy to get over it in a few weeks maybe in a few months but when you look back at the year and it's like oh i remember in february when i was so depressed because of this girl or because of this happened or because i lost the job and then like, okay that happened and i'm okay now and that's for, i think that's part of realizing what's worth happiness and what is it which i believe as i said happiness it's well health let's say of course health is very important but mm -hmm. happiness is up there top three most important and feelings in life. this sort of like strays off but let's say someone because like you know maybe a lot of people have like this thing like it's like a relationship thing let's say mm -hmm. they have someone that they know they're dragging them down a little bit right they're giving toxic them a little relationships a little bit toxic right but then mm -hmm. you're like because I'm leading to another question with this, but this is going to help me understand your, your perspective. So someone, there's like a bit of like toxicity in a way, maybe more from one side than the other. That's when do you know, time. when do you know you should cut it? And when do you know you should be like, I should actually push th through with this because I almost find in any relationship, you could always find a reason to push through and you can always find a reason to just drop it you know and i think now the culture for a lot of people is like quitting you know uh you don't like your boss quit you don't like the relationship's not going how you like it quit quit it's the easier one easy it's way the out easiest way out but then yeah. it can also be a trap the other way because what if it actually is the best solution and you just don't know so, so how stay you, and how make you, it work right yeah to stay and make it work at a job in a relationship whatever it might be how do you know mm -hmm. which one's the right and which one's the wrong way I don't know. I think like more than right and wrong, it should be like or wise and unwise. Yeah. You should prioritize. Like, first of all, is, is it possible for you to work it through? But well, anything's possible, change? right? Yeah. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Nothing's impossible. But how much will it drag you down to make that person change? Or maybe is it you that it's going to have to change? there's a bunch of factors but relationship wise i think there's a fine line between love which i'd say is the most important ingredient in any relationship it should be there should all be always be some percent percent of love in any relationship but it's so easy that that loves converts into how could I, how can I say it? Como que, no, y que se vuelve una, there's something that you do every day. This is what, uh, like it becomes what, routine? Exactly. Is there a routine? Or, but yeah, like if it becomes a routine, a daily routine, and it's just like you wake up, good morning, you go to bed, good night. Yeah. The love starts going off and it wears off it's just it starts to become a burden not not our relationship and it's possible that when that happens you do some sort of trip or i don't know anything that sparks that love again yeah. but i say that but would you say those like short highs exactly exactly yeah. don't let it become a routine because when it does it's like the mon monotony yeah of it, it's just gonna end up boring you. And you're so gonna does that spicing up else. have to happen both sides though, you're saying? It has to be reciprocal, of course. Yeah. It has to be reciprocal. So if it's only one fighting for for that relationship, it's not gonna work. The other yeah. person is in a routine mode already. Yeah, it's all about spicing it up. It's all about spicing it up.
Keeping it, keeping it fun, man. Keeping it fun, know, fun. keeping, keeping it course. fluid, keeping it flowing. For uh, for me, and I know for a lot of people, fun is cinnamon synonym for happiness. Happiness. Being bored is so unhappy. That is like, I can't I can't be bored. I'm gonna find, and you're you're the type of person as well. You're gonna find something to do. You're yeah, but never sometimes have, like nothing absolutely nothing to do you know sometimes i try to um there's a guy that told me he's like rest in motion charles you know so even like i went surfing this morning and i didn't catch as many waves as i normally might have as i probably could have but i'm like even though i'm moving i'm like sort of taking it easy letting the mind digest certain things that are happening so but then also sometimes I could find it in adrenaline or I could also find it in complete uh, nothingness, you know, like. Stand still. It's very hard though. I find it more when I'm doing something a bit more active where I can think better. But even mm -hmm. once in a while that walk, you know, that's something different that you normally don't do. Like I don't go walking on the beach every day. But maybe you, you go for that one walk and that sort of like spices it up, spices up like. It's your, something different, it's something new something different, something new, but, uh, the people that are just sitting there day in and day out, Netflixing, Instagramming there, I have a hard time. Be, every day becomes a routine and it's, it's gonna drag but people like it because it's comforting. But, but it also kills well, you. You have to get out of your comfort zone every, every once in a while, man, at least once a week. At least, in oh, at least once a week. In the in the in the song you were talking about earlier, wear sunscreen. Yeah. There's this one part that he says, "Do something every day that, that scares, scares you." Yeah, yeah, it's true. Every day is, might be a lot, but at least, man, three times a week. Do yeah, something. at least try. You know, like at least try to put yourself out there in a way. Exactly. Even Everything though sometimes that you, you get do shut that's down. New, it's gonna unlock something that you didn't have before. It's true. It's like levels. That's why I see it like a game in the end. You're just unlocking stages, stuff. Man. It's stages, totally. <laughs> so every time you have a new armor, something, something new, something. So then, um, I don't even. Th I think you, you complete. I think you almost dodged that question of how do you find happiness yourself. I think you yeah. went off of it, but uh, but in any case, yeah. I sort of got it. It's like sort of doing something new, and one thing that we touched up on, but then we sort of we went off on a tangent was like, how did you find the, Oh, well, you mentioned it. You said you found satisfaction, not only through the employer, but through the clients you were serving. So being of service to people. Mm -hmm. And so how do you see, because a lot of people, especially nowadays, right. If they go into an operation and they're not the owner, they're like, oh, I'm nobody. I have no chance to like, you know, like they, they feel like it's like a lowering of- Get up the ladder. So. Of the, no, well, like, I'm not even saying the ladder. I'm just saying like, they feel like they're like, oh, I'm better than this. You know, I sort of mentality, even though they might have never done anything in their life. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm better than this first job. How, do, how, that, how, how should you see people overcoming that? Do you see that even as a problem? And in case you're still there, Fabricio, it cut out again. Are you there? Can you hear me okay? I hear, it's quite ah, was it your headphones? Or did you open up your headphones? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Are you there? We're Wait. back. Yeah, we're back. I don't know what's up with your internet. Wait, flip it one more yeah, time. So. Boom. Boom. There we go. Okay, so that's something that. Okay, so the last thing I heard was um sort of like the how first job and stuff and this is not job. what i deserve i should be 
doing something a bit of more entitlement. fulfilling or something that I ignore. But I've come to realize now yeah. that the first, of course, the first job, but maybe the first five jobs, they're not going to be the, what you're looking for. And they're necessary, though. Yeah. It is so unlikely that from the first time, and people do accomplish this. And for me, it's like, hey, congrats. But to get from right off the bat, right off graduation, be like, oh, I love my job, that it's not common. And it's not, I don't see it, now I don't see it as a bad thing. Like being, like working, even with people you don't like, with bosses you don't like, or in industries you don't like, you're going to learn a lot from it. And I think that it's necessary learning for what's to come in the future. For whenever you find, for you to find, realize that what you're doing, you like it, you're going to have to have done things that you didn't like. Or have but then when you're in those places time. that you don't like or that you're not connecting with, how should you behave? I think there's a fine line between like, I don't like this, I'm not gonna do it. And like, I don't like this, but I'm gonna give it a chance. I am I am a lot of like giving it a chance. Yeah. If, if you real, okay, if you start a job, I've had friends that start a job and at the month at the job, they're like, no, nah, I quit, I didn't like it. Yeah, you gotta give it more than that. A month is not enough, two months, three. Sometimes a year is not enough for you to find out if you really don't like it or if, if it's that you're unhappy at the moment, but there are certain things that you can do that can happen a year later at a job, for example, that you're like, okay, this, is, this isn't actually that bad. So I'd suggest like, give it a chance. And for example, I tell my sister a lot, my sister just came back. She's starting her professional career now as an interior design. And she complains a lot about everything. And I tell her like, hey, that's part of it. And you complaining, it's not it's not gonna make it better. Better. Yeah. Like suck it up. That's part of it. And but like because that's what I, I sort of feel is like people, you know, I have this one thing, this one like quirk that I find, you know how sometimes someone's like, ah, don't worry, it's free. Like the company will pay for it. Or mm -hmm. oh, oh uh, my dad's paying for it, so don't worry, it's free. Mm -hmm. It's like it's not free. Everything you, costs you're not, something. It's just, you're not paying for it, but it's not free. Exactly. It's costing someone something somewhere. And what I always find, especially whether you're um, taking money from someone because of a service you're providing, or you're taking money from a company because you're an employee there for whatever you're doing, you know, you have a responsibility to like deliver. That's where you're there. Because if the client is paying he's delivering his part of the bargain if the company is paying they're delivering their part of the bargain mm -hmm. now it's like up to you to do your part and what i find is that a lot of people sort of are like they want more than that like that's not enough for them you know and they take up more resources than they should be taking up just because they're not putting in that little extra effort to mm -hmm provide a service to a client or to provide um, to do the work necessary for the establishment. So it's like, how do you, how one do you second, Charles. I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect this cause. Yeah. I see someone in the back. Is that the sister of the architect? Is this the architect? Can you hear me fine? Yeah, yeah. Was that the architect? Yeah, that was her. Oh, okay. That was the uh, one that complains a lot. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. No, well, she should have been there for what we were saying. Might uh, spark something. Yeah. Can I ask her to come back? No, no, no it's, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an interesting social experiment. That's how I also I leave a lot of things. You know, I always leave things open just to see how people will react, right? What will someone do? And what I do find I think is you, that can, you can learn a lot from a person, like 
on how they react to certain things. But now it's almost predictable because of everyone is in the same routines. So everyone's watching the same TV shows. Everyone's watching the same movies. Everyone's exposed to the same memes. And behind uh -huh. this, these, these things, even though that people think they're all unique snowflakes, um, they're programmed by them. So how they say something, how they behave, how they react to something is very- uh, They got it from somewhere, right? Some influence. So then you can sort of pinpoint like, oh, this person, like, oh, he has this sort of sense of humor. Okay, maybe he's the office. I, I'm gonna hang around this guy a little bit longer. Dude, I was just, I was thinking about the office later. <laughs> yeah, the office is the bomb. But, oh, this person um, is living a fairy tale. This might be a Twilight, um, mm -hmm, a person. Twilight person, right? Why didn't you bite yeah. me in the neck and turn me to a vampire? Well, that was a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> but uh, like no, nah, it's it's really crazy the society and um, how things are going. That's why I sort of like I I like. I'm not sure if it's the best idea. It's good that there's people that um, because what I was sort of leading to with that is like you're mentioning that a lot of people are talking to you about their problems, and what was sort of concluded is like. A lot of the problems people have even in our own lives probably have very simple solutions but when you're in the heat of it when you're in the in the action it's easy to not see clearly you know it's easy to be irrational as well because you're like oh but yeah. you don't understand you don't have all the details and it's mm -hmm. like nah like history repeats itself you're not the only one who's lived through this and know? at the moment you're like you're like blurred you're can pass a few hours later and you're like oh Mm, should have reacted differently should have done this should have said that and with and with that it's like do you think because you're saying a lot of people bounce ideas off you or bounce uh, problems off you is it the same people bouncing off different problems off of you and do you sort of see like these people or individuals could maybe take a little bit more initiative on their side to try to fix themselves instead of like relaying for an outside source or how do you sort of see that most of the time when people speak about something that's bothering them they know how they can solve it or what they should do or what you're going to tell them they should do they just need to hear it from someone else yes but does that person only come like get on one phone call let's say with you and then that's it or is it like next oh, week there's no. a new one it's a it's a recurring it can be either the same problem just different chapters of it yeah or that same problem let's say the issue so i don't like the word problem let's say issue sure. is a girl, it's a girl. Uh, like a friend of mine with this girl something blah blah two things can happen either eventually they're gonna end up being boyfriend and girlfriend or they're not going to keep talking yeah and the problem is going to be a new one eventually with another person with another person or another an issue or they're breaking up or something at work or so the problems are different yet they have certain similarities depending on the person and what's the root the person the way the person is uh, processing it. The, the issue yeah totally yeah and mentality. do you find it's more like victim mentality like oh why is this always happening to me or is it different like what do you mm, i wouldn't say it's much like people don't focus as much as they used to and like ah why me they're what like do okay people, what do me. people focus on then now or what do you feel it's me it's happening how should i approach it? You think people think like that? At least the people I try to surround, surround myself. Because like being, thinking why me, that's a stupid way to approach an issue or a problem. That's yeah. that's not the root of the problem. Why you, it's it's already, you. what does it matter why it's you? It's you. <laughs> yeah, it's you. <laughs> oh, man. And if someone were like to be, oh, why me? It's like, I'd tell them that. I don't know why, but it's it's you. Yeah. Why does it matter, man? Why it won't affect? So what do you do from here, type of thing? Exactly. Exactly. Um. 
All right. All right. All right. I have I wrote down so much stuff here. I'm not going I'm not going to go down it. But uh what I what I would love to to maybe uh end it at is two things. The cafe, right? Working in the family business on this new scale. How do you like that? How do you how do you how's that it's, going? It's totally new for me. Like yeah. so small we're a small business, but it's me and my mom like are the heads and we're building up this amazing team that it's that feels so good working at Flor de Cafe. And the fact that you see and I can't take I can take a lot of credit for it. Most of the credit it's my mom's, but you see every day at closing time the impact that it's having on everyone that's visiting us. And everyone that sits down, everyone that listens, that comes in, that comes in five times a week, has this mm -hmm. orders the same coffee. That has to be one of the most fulfilling feelings one can one one can feel literally. I mean, there comes the positive uh, feedback again. Yeah. From there's some monetary fulfillment. When you mm -hmm. see you're doing good, you're and like this year, you know how it's been for business. Yeah. And seeing that you like hard work is paying off. And you can see that in the numbers. Yeah. And at the same time, having an old lady come up telling you that she hadn't gone out since the pandemic started. And it's the first time she goes out and she feels so comfortable and so safe and she doesn't want to leave that genuine genuine smile on that people's face is yeah. is i mean you're gonna get it too yeah but you gotta kick her out because it's closing time so take a hike take a hike with lady like i like this take that sangria to go <laughs> take that to go get out of here come on yeah was yeah. the safest place come on get out of here. <laughs> streets are safe get out of here <laughs> thanks for the feedback but go home but no, <laughs> no, i'm just sure. joking like, no nah, it's it is true like what you're saying is that i can only imagine like i haven't been in that specific situation but it is a relief for a lot of people and if you could be that relief or that uh that mediator that's yeah. like uh that person that doesn't know you that you don't know you've never met in your life and she's just pouring out emotions on how he, she feels in your establishment and it helps you dream man it's, it's like if i'm doing this with this small area here i can do so much more uh, and okay, that was the cat with the cafe. I was just thinking about like, cause you're saying you're building up this team and everything like that. And a thought came to my mind, which was like, should your first jobs be mo money orientated or experience orientated? Uh, experience. You're not, you're not going to be rich for a time. We're not going to be like rich for a time to come. Yeah. Come most of the time. Like. If you're gonna get paid by the hour, not a lot, but it's something like you you might not even have to like it, but that you're gonna learn, learn from it, mm -hmm. you're gonna grow. You're gonna grow yeah. as a professional and you're gonna grow as a person as well. No, and I think that's that's sort of like that one dilemma that's out there is like everyone thinks that everyone else is richer than them and they're like that one like they're they should be they should be that person you mm -hmm. know and it's they should like be able to buy those shoes they should be able to buy those cars the exactly they should be able to do those trips um they should have the private jet they should have whatever this is but it's like it's not really a reality and it's sort of like what you were saying when you left university you're like you know people weren't coming after you saying hey come work with us for x amount of money it's like that's not the reality, right? And everything on that you see on the internet in one shape or form, uh, except for these talks, are curated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? The like algorithm, they're, man. They're, the they're algorithm. posed, they, the algorithms out there. They know what to show you. Well, they know, they decide they, what you see. They know what keeps your eyes staring and the screen they, open, you know? Yeah, they control where you look at. And that's the thing is like, people just need to be aware of that. I think it's like, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with like 
trying stuff out just to get that experience to get that under your belt to you know you, you might not like it you might not like it but you know that you didn't like it so and oh, that's well, a good start exactly. because at least you know what not to do next time exactly you know but if you don't know like oh, i don't know if i'm gonna like that job or not it's like just do it and then you're gonna figure it out over you're time. gonna know it exactly if you'd like it or not but, but don't we're not down you're not down with that suppose. it's like even myself i had this idea um to be doing this was pre uh, pandemic this was going to happen this year which was i wanted to do sort of like I don't know if the right word is like an apprenticeship or an internship that was okay. like most likely free, like try to message like 10 people that I'm interested in and being like, Hey, can I just come like work for you or shadow you or be part of whatever Volunteer, you're doing here? Be there. See exactly. What goes on. And, and not for money, like, because I know once you put the money factor in there, it's like it could ruin things, right? It, it changes the whole perspective, the whole scenario. 100%, 100%. But if you could be like, hey, look, like I'll come. I tr I'll try to not be a piece of crap. You know, I'm going to do my best, whatever it is. And I just want to be around like the environment, the atmosphere. And if, uh, if I learn something, awesome. If I don't, awesome. Be a sponge. I'll be a sponge, you know, a little, a little sponge right there in the corner, yeah. but, uh, that didn't go through with it. But I think that's like a good thing for people to like, you know, cause it's one thing to expose yourself through books or through content that might be informational, but it's another, it's another thing to be there to smell the shit, you know? Of course, man. Of course it's one thing is that they tell you about it and how it goes. And then one thing is you living it. Like, exactly. And that's why like, I'm a bit, uh, you know, you mentioned like developing that skill of being able to sit next to a stranger and saying, Hey, what's up. Right. That's a skill that, um, has to be developed. Very few people have that, like right off the get go because people are like, Oh, what am I going to say next? And this and that, and you sort of got to let things like how they're going to go. And many people don't feel comfortable when a stranger comes up and be like, what's up? Let's start a conversation. They're, they're so not accustomed to it. It's like, are you talking to me are you okay yeah are you trying yeah. to kill me or, or something <laughs> yeah yeah but once you realize that most of the people are not bad and they have good intentions or at least don't have bad intentions yeah you're gonna start getting out there start really living but that's the hard thing you know a lot of we're we're really that's the step um, you have to make and learn yeah. as you say you don't you're not that's the thing that. is like even I'm a, I'm a victim of that. Like, some, I don't want to associate sometimes with people. Cause I'm like, yo, I know people could be fucked up, you know? So I'm like, every day, Hey, I'd rather not more, deal with man. anybody. Every day you see things that make you feel more insecure and everything. Yeah. yeah. Cause you just yeah. never know. But, um, I think that's almost pretty much it. Like you got so much, there's so many things here, but it's like, it'll just keep going and going. And every time you say something else, I'm just like, I can yeah, talk and you about talk that. With I can talk about that, but uh, I think we could end it with something a little bit like musically. Uh, I know that you mentioned <laughs> you you mentioned the ukulele. Um, the uke. Tell us a little bit about that. How? Why? Where'd you get the idea? So I'd say that this instrument here yeah. is what has helped me get through this pandemic. This twenty twenty crazy shit show of a year i've always like music has always had a big impact on my day-to-day -day. like it's the first thing i do when i wake up play like hit play on my phone but i'd never like learn how to play an instrument and okay. when when mexico when i was in mexico stranded no job anything I've always felt somewhat pressured by my by my dad. Like he's the one that pressures me to be doing something, be being productive or something. And he was like, "Okay, so what are you gonna do with your free time? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna learn? Yeah. Are you gonna take a course? Are you gonna learn another language?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna learn how to play the ukulele." So I ordered this ukulele, not this one, the first one, um, in like Mexican Amazon. 
got it and then started watching like free tutorials on YouTube and stuff like that. And it felt so good. Like at first, I knew that I had to dedicate a few hours every day to it. And I Is that what had you did? every at least one or two hours a day. Yeah. But for anything that you're trying to learn from scratch, literally practice is the only way to make it <laughs> you're, you're, you're i'm not, sorry i'm laughing but this is of course you know like, no, no, exactly. yeah, yeah. but like it, it had been a while since i like learned a new skill let's say yeah and it's since it's something that you see the pro listen to the progress literally every day yeah it feels so rewarding when you play like a full song and where are you at now? No, I do. Now, with this, I'm starting to, I'm starting to like learn how to sing and play at the same time. Well, not sing good. I'm not. I'm not a good singer. Disclaimer. Since now, but I can. I can at least say the lyrics and play at the same time. Are you setting up? Are you setting up a song right now? Is that? I can't see the whole thing, so I'm just wondering. I just see papers flipping yeah. around. This is my this is my like my chord notebook. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I what did it say? What a I, world. What a what a wonderful world. Probably. Louis Armstrong, you know this song. Uh, probably. And so before, are you gonna play this song? Is that what you're gonna do? Do you want me to play it? I'd love to play it for sure. Yeah, yeah, but before you do, I think you touched upon something. When was the last time you learned a new skill before this? Before this? Yeah. And like a new skill, I'd also say a new skill that's like not commonly learned later on. Learning German, I'd say. But that was many years ago. That was, yeah, well, that was two years ago. Two years ago. Oh, two okay. years ago. So you but find like, it's I, opened I, something I, new in your mind, like it's unlocked a new level of something, or what? Totally, totally. Like just the fact that it's such a hard language, and that whenever I I see the minimum chance to speak German to someone that speaks German, that they have no idea that I speak German, yeah. seeing the impact on their face, like how the hell? Do, why would you know German? Like why mm -hmm. German? It's good. It's good. Like. I say I've learned a few things after that, but that has to be one of the proudest skills I've acquired. German. For sure. For sure. Over it's... the ukulele. No, no, no. Before the ukulele. <laughs> okay. this, I mean, no, no, no. This, I'm, I'm a happy guy. With... The ukulele has brought a lot of positive things in my life this year. Uh, that's good. And yeah, I think it's like that. Uh, I think one thing that you might have is that that uh, the beginner mentality, right? Like you don't mind starting from scratch. Maybe that's what this helped and German helped. Like you got to start somewhere, right? You're not going to become Ooh. fluent In the, right away. The, I don't know. I don't know. And from scratch is where you're going to start always. And the first path is always going to be the hardest. The first step. The first step. Sorry. After it, like, it only gets easier. <laughs> Does it? I thought it gets harder after. Um, it has its moments. You can be like, oh, it's like a roller coaster always. Like, there's gonna be its ups, its dubs, and then it could be like really a steep downhill down. downs. Yeah, but I might be, I, I might be on that steep downhill just for the last like right 26 years of my life. <laughs> 26 that means that there's a really up oh shit that's gonna get it coming getting all that momentum yeah straight. exactly come up with all that speed but this is never gonna be only downhill or only uphill <laughs> i hope mine just goes like this and just shoots me off <laughs> right away <laughs> nah, but... but i'm sure in that downhill you've had you've had your <laughs> No, nah, it's just straight. Just one. Nah. Just if I were to draw this on a thing, you know, just look like uh just take this line right here. You see this line just straight. Right now. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Dude, at least at least uh, a good wave you caught. Yeah, I, I hit one rock, I think, and that was sort of like a bump, but that just accelerated <laughs> it. <laughs> nah, so you gotta seek the joy. 
now that learning a new skill, I think is great. And um, you're doing it, you're still young. So, but I think even for people that are like, let's say 35, 40, 50, that stopped learning something since like 25. You're never late, never late. But it, it, it keeps that mind soft, you know, like, because people get hardened with time. And it's actually interesting that your dad, you're saying, was saying like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing next? Do you think he's quite an active person? Like, is he still, I don't know how old your dad is, but is he still like someone he's who's- really old. Uh, well, not really old, <laughs> but he's old. He's like, he's just uh, retired, let's say this year. This year was his retirement year. But and what is that? Like now in the States, it's 65 retirement? Yeah, he, I think he's, yeah, he's 64, 64, 60. Right. Okay. 65 we turned 65 this summer oh okay yeah. but is he still like developing oh, he's still himself he, he works out every day but he, the fact that he's retired now is like he can't be bored he needs to find something to do and now like By he's getting involved in, in that cafe oh, <laughs> nah, he's, he, yeah he's, uh, he might learn german before he gets before the ukulele yeah yeah they're in the house here. They're all tired of listening to me learning to play the ukulele. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, I'll be heated. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to play drums. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they first, they move me out. Oh man. So, so, but at least okay. So everyone stays active a little bit, which is good. Well, not a little bit, but everyone stays active. No, yeah, they, they all here, especially him. They need to be doing something. Yeah. So, like, well, yeah. you get wired that way, right? Exactly. No, that's so. that's the upgrade bringing. That's. Are but all right. Look like? What's the what's the song? What lyrics do we got to open? What's We're doing a concert that? then. Okay. Okay. Nice. Is this your first time showing anyone? No. No, no. I've showed a few people. Uh, you need to you need to play a background music while you're doing it, or what are you doing? No, no. I can do it. I can do it by myself. Okay. Like I've played with background music a lot now, so. <clears throat> What's the song called? Or I have to guess. You're gonna know what song it is. It's called "What a Wonderful World," and it goes like this: I see trees of green and red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, I see skies of blue and the clouds of white, the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night as I think to myself. What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Of our familiar faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands How do you do? I'll start by saying I love you. I hear babies crying and I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than we'll ever know as I think to myself. What a wonderful Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Hey. And that's that's what's got me through all this pandemic, man. It's a <laughs> pandemic. Congratulations, man. Thank that's you, good. Man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I was about to, if I was, you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd I'd be jumping. Yeah, <laughs> you got me going, man. I was gonna make a concert here. Oh man, that's actually really good, man. Congratulations on that, because uh, uh, appreciate, appreciate. It's, and it's it almost been... you have a a voice like um, 
I'm not sure what singer it is, but it's a guy from around those times that he has like a yeah. bit of a lower tone, deeper voice. Something it's along those to lines. Sing those types of songs because I have a horrible like singing voice, but those types of songs like you can work it out just like that's this. what I'm saying because like a guitar, or, well, like exactly. ukulele vibe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do people so, who play ukuleles, um, is it like a hardcore thing in the sense of like they're like this is not a guitar, it's a ukulele? Yeah, because it's such a, a thing? different instrument, it's too ah, different. Okay. Like, they'd be like, Oh, you play ukulele, can you play the guitar? and like. No, and the people that play guitar doesn't mean they can play ukulele as well. They can strum it and they, but like, try to make a few chords, and it's easier to learn the other once you know one of them. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's not the same. No, it uh, definitely doesn't look the same. But I was wondering because you know, there's like people that are like, "Oh, you're a surfer." They're like, "No, I'm a kiter," and they're like, "Gotcha." Kite surf, yeah, yeah. You know, like exactly. they. Or what are you, or oh you surf no i'm a longboarder okay yeah, well i got gotcha. you the boogie boarders versus the surfers you know? or that exactly yeah you see um, that's another skill set that i could that i learned in sosua the surfing the kite surfing all that hey it's a water sports are awesome they really open you up for sure water and they, and, and they and they and they clean you out a lot too you get a lot of salt moving around yeah yeah <laughs> Place to uh, be, man. I'm ready. What a wonderful world. It is. It's a wonderful ass world. It is. It's just the perspective, what you focus on, and the mentality. But there's this woodcraft law from this special place that says, be joyful, seek the joy of being alive. And that's something that I try to repeat myself every day. That's the mantra. That's the mantra. Just think about it. getting tattooed. Well, start off with putting it just right outside the restaurant, right? Before right. getting it tattooed, yeah. and then seeing seeing if it click, see if it gets some clicks, see if it gets some yeah. uh, some photos. You know, make a little make a little yeah, art. Yeah. I like the idea. Be <laughs> joyful. Seek the joy in life. Of being right. alive. Of being alive. Of being alive. Seek the joy of being alive. So I don't know if you got anything to add to that because you pretty much ended it on a, like on an ending note, you know, that was like Dude, the, I think the last that's a good ending, actually. That's a good ending. Well, I'm excited to see um, the future development and the future adventures of your life, one. because one thing that uh, even though not everyone has all the details, uh, of your life and I don't have all the details either but looking at it from the outside I don't definitely either. what I don't either yeah, you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too many details to keep track of I'll start writing them down but it's like um, I think with everything that has happened let's say from your life from like after high school to where we are today specifically today today um of October 2020 is quite uh, hopeful and um, real in the sense of like no matter what's happening you just keep pushing forward <clears throat> and then that's it the right attitude man that's what that's how I look at it and that's it you know and uh, no matter what's going on it's just like it is what it is and uh why me well it is that's it you know it's happening to you so deal with it exactly so don't it's focus true. on what's not important and what's not going to change wear sunscreen and take a lot of pictures <laughs> a lot of pictures a lot of mental pictures though my phone battery my phone uh memory is full this is oh, insane yeah sucks. Fucking yeah, Apple. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah. what I, I don't know what iCloud does because it's not doing anything. <laughs> oh, you pay three dollars a month, eh? but at the same time, every month is like, oh, your phone is full. is full. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Why am I paying you? Uh, well, yo, Fabricio, um, it was a pleasure. My man, Charles. Likewise. It was it was a first nighttime session. Uh, completely skipped my bedtime. So the, <laughs> the mother in me, the female in me is like, Charles, why are you doing this? Go you know, to bed, it's late. 
yeah, we're trying to make, we're trying to get you better and you just keep doing this to us. And I'm like, come on guys, take it easy. Don't worry. It's just but, one day, right? but it was worth it. And no, uh, totally, man. Thanks for doing this. It's really, it's good to talk. It's good to be asked questions. It's good to be listened and to share whatever knowledge that we've learned throughout the way. I feel that it's, it's, well, with you, we just scratched the surface. I think you can go, you know, we scratched the surface on everything because um, I don't think that, you know, the details are important, I find, but I think also people just like sort of the babying attitude that we were talking about before with like the Europeans, Americans, um, mm -hmm. it's like, you need to almost have a bit of a European or Asian uh, mentality of like some details you're gonna have to figure out for yourself. You get to fill in the okay. blanks. If and it's done for you, you're not going to learn how to do it. If they tie a shoe, if they tie a shoe every time you put a, sh a new shoe on, what what what's going to happen when that person's not there? You know? I just buy Velcro shoes, so I don't have that problem. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheated that one. I was like, yeah. Oh, you need to learn how to tie your shoes. I'm like, yeah, right. Whatever you say. <laughs> Who needs, who has laces on their shoes? As long as it makes size 9.5 Velcro shoes, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Velcros. And slip on sandals, we're good. Yeah. No, but uh, that's the whole thing is like, there, there is a lot of details that do help. Like the context helps people relate to certain things. But then again, you gotta understand, you know, like everyone, anyone who even helps you had to deal with it like you're dealing with it without a map right sort of just like let me just go mm. figure out where this goes you know and that's it there's never there's never like a clear path so i'm not one that believes in destiny i don't believe I don't, that you're there your next day i don't think it's written down destiny is just an excuse for people the want for things to happen instead of going out and making them happen but do you so, believe in karma oh yeah okay karma, what goes around comes around eventually okay. No, okay all right so with that being said that you don't believe well I, okay i understand what you're saying you're saying that like there's no uh fixed end point for every individual like you could sort of create your end point and it, it changes you, every day with all your actions. Exactly. Okay. I exactly. Yeah. Okay. If something's for you, si algo tapa ti, mm -hmm. it's you're not gonna evade it. Tapa ti. About how it happens, when it happens, is gonna your actions today are gonna have an impact on the end result. Every action you make every day. That's how I see it. So you don't believe in like a fixed destiny, but you do believe that you're in control of your own destiny. Exactly. Okay, because you can throw some people off with that one. I don't believe in destiny. Like, what, what do you mean? What do we, what do, we do for Brisa? We just don't oh, yeah. do anything? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> Go out there and do it. Yeah, buy all your clothes at Nike, just as a reminder to just do it. <laughs> Are you sponsored already? <laughs> by Nike? No, no, those guys. Uh, yeah, no, that's not... Uh, <laughs> I'm not on, I, you know, like they're looking at the budget. They're trying to see if they could fit me in, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's not. Maybe uh, next year. No yeah, they need their sales budget. to go up. Yeah. Sell a couple more t-shirts before they can put me on the payroll. <laughs> it's coming, though. It's coming. <laughs> ah, we never know. We never know. But uh, no, nah, I do love the, the whole thing of life. It's so interesting because, you know, you feel like you've learned so much and then you're like, it's only began there's so much still to learn so when you get to that 50 that 70 that uh 45 mark or even if we get to 100 one 110 it's like what is gonna go on and then when you look back at those guys that are like 19 and they're like why is this happening to me and you're like buddy you have no idea hold on tight <laughs> exactly but uh, something that i find really amusing is speaking to the elder because of that oh it's the best yeah, it's so much. It's so enlightening. Because even though they can't relate on some specifics, like they'll be like, I didn't have phones when I was growing up. They did have mm -hmm. another sort of issue that is like, if you had a phone type thing. Exactly. So you just exactly. have to find those connections. And but they've lived 
four and five times what you've lit. So, I mean, they're going to know a lot about many things. And that's the thing is that you have to talk to them and listen to them. But a lot of people don't interact with older people nowadays. Like, oh, those guys smell funny and they're weird. Yeah. <laughs> you got to look beyond that. And there's so much more. Yeah. You just got to rub some mint before you go there. You just yeah. Wow, breathe, through the, breathe through the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> The guy's like, are you all right? <laughs> Everything's all good. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, Fabricio, it was a pleasure. Um, I'm going to head off. And I think you I'm have your... Time you, to go to bed. Yes. Yeah. Got a work day tomorrow, so... Exactly. Do you open up or you show up? No, no, no. We open at 7.30. I get there like at 9.30. Do you guys also do baked goods there? Yeah, we have a few like. But I'm, um, I, I saw what you did last time, but I'm stuff. saying, do you like make muffins every day and things like that or not that sort of stuff yet? Dude, for example, today we ran, we ran out of muffins and my mom had to make them and she was like, no, nah, I'm too tired. I'm making them tomorrow. Yeah, that happens. You got to come while they're hot. That's the, that's the rule. If someone's like, yeah, why don't you have any more muffins? Mm. Should have came here earlier, brother. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, we sold out or we didn't want to make them. Are you coming this weekend always? Yeah. Uh, I will be there uh, Friday and I will be also there Monday, but then Saturday and Sunday will be Pedernales. So I don't know if it cut out again. Okay, okay. You let me know. Yeah, but I definitely want to pass by because um, it cut out a bit at the beginning. Yeah. Everything looks good, so I do want to pass by, and um, yeah, but I'm gonna to get to Santo Domingo a bit late, I think, on Friday, like four ish, five, and then okay. I'll be gone in the morning on Saturday, like by eight, I'll be gone on the road, eight in the morning. So I'll be back on Monday though. I'll, I'll probably stick around okay. Monday. If anything, on Monday morning for breakfast, before you go back, you can there you have go. that for breakfast. That's a for sure. That's a for sure. But all right. So in and out, sir. Appreciate the time. And no, man, Charles. have a good one. The pleasure was all mine. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah. And looking forward, you know, TED Talks are limited, right? Night, In time. Man. Take care. Thanks again. Yeah.